All right, coming back. Click this. Big Sexy Hollywood is what we're talking about this week, baby. We've dropped allusions to your films in the last few weeks, your your television projects, your movies. So we figured, well, let's spend an episode going through these. They must Each production must be chock full of anecdotal stuff. Some half of this stuff I I had to look up I I hadn't heard but then I was impressed. Half of it I'll pro- half of it I'll probably fucking have no, re- <laughs> no you remembrance. Won't remember. That's so true. The 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 fucking ninety percent of the voice stuff that I've done I'll somebody will make reference to or I'll see it on a on a statement. And I'm like I did that. So let's the go. Voice uh, let of me, Seika? Let me ask. Let me ask you. Well, because I'm eleven soft. <laughs> Let me ask you first. Your first credit I have that I see is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles two. The of course Correct. the Secret of the Ooze in ninety one. Um, now are that, you that's, doing? That's, that's Mrs. Nash. What's that? Let's see this. That's, that's oh, that, my oh wife. there you are. Look at that. That's me and my wife. Excellent. She was on set. Were you married at the time? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Ninety one. You yeah. Recently married though, no. Eighty eight. Eighty eight. Um, what were you in the ring? What were you? Were you Oz yet, or were you still doing the steel no, and the I was, master I was, blasters? I, I think I was actually underneath a hood. It's like Doctor X or some shit. I was wearing uh flares, black scorpion, red mask with the black scorpion on it. I was wearing that. He left it after that pay per view. He left it in the locker room, and I, I I kept it, and I started wearing it as my hair grew back. That that uniform's having its last match in two weeks. I just want to let you know that the the Red Scorpion's last match. Um, so how do you get the call? How do you get the call for this? This is in, this is insane. So I'm in. Let me fix this here. I'm in uh, Greensboro, uh, North Carolina, and I'm walking out of the uh, out of the ring, and I hear somebody yelling, "Nash, Nash." And this is, you know, this is before internet and all that shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I look, there's these two guys over there. And one of them's got a card in his hand. So I walk over. It says Carico Studios. And the guy says, hey, would you be interested in playing a Super Shredder on the Ninja Turtles movie? And I'm like, yeah. Fuck yeah. I said, like, yeah, I'm looking at it. It's a card. I mean, you know. I said, okay. He goes, he goes, is there any way we could do a, a head mold of you right now? I'm like, what? <laughs> right there. I mean, they wanted to, I, I went to a Holiday Inn. They stuck two fucking straws up my nose and did a, a fucking uh, uh, cast on my head. So and no I, no read, no audition, nothing. Nothing. Guy came up to you at a, at a wrestling show. What I heard was that Kevin Paul, I believe that's his name, Whoever played the Predator, whoever played Harry and Henderson's, um, uh, he he passed, and they had already started making this the the Super Shredder costume, and they needed somebody that was close to seven feet. And at that point, they had me listed as seven feet. So when they saw me on TV, they saw I was coming in the area, so they sent those guys out to look at me. So that's crazy. I no, made, the, I made, I was on set for, this is back when they used to bring you on set, like for the, like, you had like two scenes and they bring you on set for fucking, you know, like a month. Yeah. You know? And, uh, so I was on set for, I made more money doing Ninja Turtles than I did wrestling my first year. Wow. Counting residuals or, or your first checks? No, my, just my, just my, my payment for t- time in, uh. Time on set. What other wrestlers would have made good actors? I mean, everyone's charismatic, right? If you're if you're in this day and age where TV is what it's all about, they you have to be charismatic to be a successful wrestler. But who do you think could have done like some hardcore acting? I think Raven could have done it. Um, trying to think about people that. Uh... It's such, a, it's, it's, it's such a weird call because it's like you, you, you never know, mm-hmm. you know. It's just 
there's a lot of people that say like, oh, I could be an actor. And it's just like, well, bitch, you can't fucking remember fucking a line. You're brain dead. <laughs> you know, you, you really have to be prepared when you get out there and fucking, you know, you better know where you're, if they stop and say, okay, start here. And you, it's, it's like, you can't go, uh, A, B, C, D, F, G, L, M, Q, R, S, T. You just got to go S, T. You got to write from there because that's where they want you from. So you 55 people standing around and you're very aware that yeah. everybody, even though you, you block it all out, you're just, you're looking at who you're looking at. Right. But you are so aware. Or I always was anyway. I, I, maybe it speaks to my weakness, but I was always very aware. There were 55 fucking people wanting to move to the next fucking setup to get the hell out of there at, at every single moment. I've actually I, learned as I've done more and more stuff. To just really take, I mean, I, I I enjoy it. Like, to me, it's like every time that I'm on set, like when they say, when they rap me, I always walk around whatever, you know, whatever the set is or whatever the situation is and just kind of absorb it because in that industry, that could be it. That could be your last time you ever walk in front of a camera. And uh, so I, I, I really uh, have, like, I love the process. Um, I love the sitting around and waiting. And, and getting to know f different actors. Who do you hang with? I, I always, I never hung with actors. I always, like the Teamsters, I always thought were the coolest. Teamsters like, are always great guys. I mean, yeah. you, you're always going to end up like being friends with the boom guy. You know, because he's, he's like, you know, he's, especially when you're 6'10", because the, the boom's next to Nash's goddamn head. He's like, well, fuck, man. I'm like, oh, my deltoids are on fire. I was going to say, you can't yeah, go much Yeah, higher. he's like, fuck, man. You're killing me, Nash. I'm like, sorry, <clears> dude. <throat> How, you, know, well, you know who I think would have been a good actor? Can you, give me, can you give me a little Pat Patterson as Travis Bickle in Taxi Driver? Give me a little you talking to me. Good, please. Right. Are you from... Hey, Banana. Hey, you. Are you talking to me? Motherfucking tabernacle. I tell you right now, you don't talk to me. Very I talk good. to you, you you son of a bitch. Very fucking good. guy. How about Cor I, I I'm gonna do a little cornet as Hamlet, okay? All to right. be or not to motherfucking be, that's a goddamn question. Whether it's to tis nobler in the mind, to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or take seas again, take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them. To sleep or chance to dream. There's the motherfucking rub, for in the wake of sleep what dreams might come. That's all I remember from it. But like there's it. a little there's a little I like uh, your dinero you did the other day. Last episode. Was I sleeping? <laughs> I liked it. Um, I just watched I just watched Limitless and then I popped. What's because, that? Well, I was watching Limitless the other day and I popped because they De Niro makes that exact same face the first time he gets uh Bradley Cooper in the back of the fucking my buck. De Niro makes that face in everything. All right, let's begin. Let's begin the projects here. So, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now I'm going to move into. Oh, you know what else I noticed? It was the Secret of the Ooze. Was it? Was it the uh, the Secret of the Ooze? Right. You played Oz in the ring, and then you were on Razor's DVD, which was called Oozing Machismo. So you were Ooze and Oz for the first few years of your of your career. Yes. Oh, there's your yes. IMDb right there. Um, Swamp Thing. Talk a little Swamp Thing. This was the TV series version. Me and of Swamp Giant Thing. Gonzalez is Mayan gods. Quixo? You were Quixo, weren't you? Yeah. Say that 11 dozen times. So were you, you were falling into like the green mutant. Uh, it's a good thing you didn't get uh, a typecast in there, but you could have very easily fallen into the, like the green mutant creature uh, typecasting with the first two films. Where'd they do that, Swamp Thing? California Swamp no Swamp Thing was where, where they were actually doing uh studio work out of Universal down in Florida. Oh, okay. Uh let's see. Super what the hell was Super Force for God's sake? Super sakes? Force was a show um uh just a syndicated show. I played the Petey Bog man. They found me in a uh uh inside of a tree. And I did two episodes and they I they actually uh had the uh one soon they had me trapped in an alleyway and they uh let the dogs go on me so i had the the mitts you know the the, the arm gimmicks and they uh i got hit by two two uh, sh shepherds so you had it you had to wear it on the set just in case they they nipped no they did they came i had them one on each arm 
Oh. You yeah. know, anything that comes out of a tree is over, by the way. I just want you to know that. Yeah. Um, so, now, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, I didn't know this. You were the giant in that, no? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I wish I could have played over because they, they, they didn't really give me good direction. Like, I should have came out because I'm kind of like really, I should have came out and like I was like, rah, 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 rah. and she would say, ah, I said, and I should have said like in a British voice, like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I should have just changed up and showed my range there. But would you, would you have gone into business for yourself like that? Yeah, absolutely. I was I, I got thirty five k. I was there for four hours. That's what fucking people. That's what that's what the industry used to pay. I know. I got thirty five thousand dollars for like four four hours work. That's like thirteen weeks in Vancouver right now. <laughs> uh, family plan. Jackhammer man, I got a couple of lines with uh with with uh, Mr. Ryan out at uh. They shot that in Phoenix and somehow got a hold of me. I don't know how. And I, they said, do you want to do this? It was a one day, one and off. And I said, it was funny because like two and a half years later, it played on Delta. And all the boys were like, were you in some fucking movies at Jackhammer, guys? I'm like, yeah, 11 soft. You, you you didn't do Jack Hammer. You didn't you didn't do any uh you didn't have any scenes with uh, Leslie Nielsen, did you? No, no. Judge Reinhold. I was tall enough. I was tall enough to see in his trailer. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Nikki, this is the TV series, right? Don't miss Love Boat. Wait, go go down. You did Love Boat. Yeah. This was that was this Love. This was the and, redo. Yeah, it was me and me and Goldberg played like we were tag team partners, and he was. He was getting married, and I was upset with him. And he he spears me at the end into the uh, swimming pool on the uh, on the boat. We have like a, a fight. Was, was were any of the originals in? No, the- it was Robert Urich. Um, God, what was it? It was a really pretty lady that was on. Was that it was, maybe Stephanie Seymour? Was she on that or the mom? Whoever the she was really attractive. I can't remember what who, who the who the she was a sweetheart. Let's see. She would have been like she, she was a regular. Robert Urich. Uh, oh, Joan Severin. There she is, Joan. Yeah. You lose me for a minute? I think I went out for a minute. I, uh, yeah, Joan Severance. Yeah, great. she was. Joan Severance, okay. Yeah, she was in uh, Hogan's movie that. Uh, oh, yes, she was. Yeah. She has those light eyes, right? Doesn't she yeah, have those she, really light eyes? She's a, she's a pretty lady. No Holds Barred, I think, is the film yes, you're referring yes. to. So. Yeah. Um, now, Love Boat, were any of the originals uh, in Love Boat with you? Like, uh, I don't, I don't, I, no, I don't, I don't remember that. Gavin McLeod? So. No. Because Robert um, Ur- Robert Urich uh, Dantana was our our captain. Oh yeah, they replaced Gavin McLeod. I, no kidding aside, I actually watched. I actually put on Love Boat on. It's on Paramount Plus. So for mindless entertainment, at the end of the night, my wife and I will put on episodes of Love Boat. So you're very over with me right now for ever doing Love Boat. Question: Was it on a set or on a boat? Set. Okay. Because they mixed them up back in the day, you know. Robert Urich was really kind. He came to me uh, like halfway through the week and sat down and had lunch with me. And he said, you know, he says you should really look into this. He says, you've really got good comedic timing. And I thought like, wow, man, that was like, like that was, that was kind of nice. That was Thanks nice. For- but, but could you think of anyone with, with less comedy experience than Robert Urich? But he was actually, he was actually like funny on that show. Was he? Yeah. See, I, I- I see Vegas. Where else am I going? Vegas. What else? Robert Urich, right? Yeah. All right. All right. Who who would have known? It's yeah. Gilbert Gottfried, Robert Urich, right under him. Um. Yeah. Um. So Nikki? now we can do Nikki. Yeah. Played a gay wrestler. The Big Easy. You, with you, Nikki you, Nikki Cox, who was uh, so you didn't time. have to act. In other words, no, not at all. 
Um, now Punisher. Let's get to let's do a little Punisher right now. I I saw a uh, um, a behind the scenes video. It's available on YouTube if you guys want to search it. It's kind of extensive. They they are you're doing a fight scene. You're breaking down a door, and uh, you guys are choreographing the uh, the fight. When you have to do that, when you have to, because obviously in your career you're a wrestler, so they figure, okay, you know, Kevin can throw actors around. Are you working with the? You're probably doing your own stuff, but is the actor Thomas did everything okay. except we did not. We we both did everything except roll down the stairs. You both oh, and did. And when I hit him with the toilet, when I hit him through the, with the toilet, that was a stunt guy because they had him on a wench, a wench, and they pulled him up too low actually and knocked the knocked the fuck out of the stunt guy. But Thomas Thomas run ran like there's a scene where I pick him up and I I, I it like there's a breakaway and the camera angle is now shooting down the hallway and Thomas like goes uh through the drywall across the hall and into a brick wall which is an actual brick wall that they had uh, built and thomas hit it so hard he broke some of the brick off it wow and he was fucking out cold i dragged him up the fucking up to the camera by the like by his belt i dragged him like a suitcase and i fucking like dropped him at the at the director's feet kind of said like he's out why do the you funniest think thing, there's the funniest thing is anytime you do anything in uh it, it, and like especially when it, it's like a, a a very big money film and like you're just there for four or five days and this guy's got sixty more days to fucking shoot you know now it would be thirty but uh they always come over and they like uh you do realize that uh if Thomas gets hurt we could shut down and Blah 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 blah. I'm like, yeah. Like, see, like what we do, like we don't really kill each other every night. You stupid fuck. Because we got another town to go to, also. So, uh, like the guy that was the stunt coordinator and the fight coordinator, he's just like he was going on and on about some different shit. I said, I said, how, how many of these have you done? He's like, you know, like seventeen. I said, yeah, I've done twenty four fucking half hour matches this you know this that fucking was this month. month yeah, yeah. like i think I, I think i fucking got this so the longest yard now were you a fan of the original yes yes here's 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 the tidbit on that so the originals the original script um inglehart my character has one line who drank all the damn damn Gatorade? That's it. Only line. And the rest of it was all improv by me. Oh, really? Did they decide on the set to do that, or were you told that you'd have to come up with more? No, they they just would they they do another take, and then when they did they did the, the, another take, I'd always throw something out, and then it got to the point where. Uh, Pete Siegel was the uh, was the director, and Pete was just like, every time I was in the scene, he'd go like, "Okay, Nash, you, you got anything?" I'd be like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come with something," and I'd throw another one out. So, uh, if you ever if you ever like watch the deleted scenes, because I'm in I'm in that movie a lot, and uh, the, uh, the I think the, of the deleted scenes, I'm in four of the six that that just barely made it. So that's um that's your that's your wrestling background with all that improv, right? Being able to yeah. to talk. Well, that's just that's anything though. I mean, if, if you allow a wrestler in a room, he's going to fucking steal it. Right. Yeah, he's going to get over. Grandma's boy. You were mover number 2. Yep. Yeah. I call classic was that the horror film? No. What was the horror? No, film? it's it's a it's a weed it's a weed uh it's a, a cannabis driven story. Uh Covert uh lives with his uh I think it's his aunt and uh it's, it's a video game. It's just a it's a cult classic. I mean, it's just one of those movies, man, when you when you watch it, you're like, Wow, that's 
That's that's a good movie. The paycheck cleared. That's all that matters. Yeah. Plus, the, I got to, I got to do my scene with Rob Schneider. Rob Rob Schneider's in my scene, so I got to. And he didn't say you can do it. He was fucking a. He was a Russian guy. Funny in real life, Mr. Schneider. Yeah, always. Yeah. All those guys, Spade, like that. Like when we had our halfway through that, like all of Sandler's buddies came and uh, Adams a fucking. Adams, a, 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 this is how this is how uh, the, the kind of guy Adam is. So it's the first day where everybody's there, and we're waiting for Adam to show up at the football field, and he shows up in a fucking red Dodge Magnum rental car. I mean, just as Dutch as it could be. And then I remember the highlight of that that whole thing was because Austin was there, and me and Austin were fucking. We were like. Two fucking thieves, man. We just we're, we're together twenty four seven, and uh, I think our per diem was like sixty eight or seventy four bucks, something real low. So we we made a pact that we would not not spend over that per day. So we we would like Steve would go to the liquor store and I'd buy my wine and Steve would buy his vodka and we'd just go up and up and down the elevator. And fucking refill our glasses and shit while everybody else is, you know, paying fucking, you know, top shelf fucking prices down at the bar every night. But we couldn't wait for fucking Burt Reynolds to get there because I always wanted to know if Burt Reynolds fucking hooked up with Rachel Ward. And um, who I thought was just at the, it, it, when that movie Sharky's Machine came out and she came to the door for the first time, you're just like, holy fuck, who's that? Yeah. Like one of those Bo Derek moments, you know, when it's just like, okay, okay, that's my that's my new go to. So, uh, and but he has some great stories. I mean, just being around Bert that and Chris Rock. I mean, what a fucking what a crew. How how was Bert? Was he accessible? Fuck yeah, just one of the boys. Nah. Fucking played football at F- at FSU. Yeah, you know? yeah, he's a big Florida State. Yeah, I mean, he's just one of the boys. DOA. Take me to DOA. Take you to China for fucking 110 days. Yeah. Yeah, fuck. That was, the, the girls were amazing. Uh, Jamie uh, Presley played, played my uh, daughter. She's a fucking hoot. Drinks fucking Jack Daniels and, I mean, just, she's fucking, she's a, she, she, we had some fun. It was brutal, but Eric Roberts was on the set. Uh, it was Hot, a good time. Hottest chick off camera that you worked with? Actress, actress. On on camera? Off. Hottest off. Because, you know, a lot of times you see them in real oh, life. You mean, like, you oh, mean, look at her toes. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. Can't go. Who was consistent? Who was consistent from as as hot as she looked on the screen? I, Olivia Moon that it, 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 it was in the first Magic Mike was I thought she was a really uh, a, 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 just a gorgeous girl, like no makeup. That you know that perfect. Uh, let me think. Who else? Amber Heard. Amber was very attractive. Yeah, she was very attractive. Jada, Jada was, Jada's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. You know, she, Jada, Jada's a, a, a gorgeous woman. Um, let me just think who else. Craziest actress. Craziest. Jane, uh, my, my wife and dog is, she's, 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 she's a hoot, man. But she's such a good actress. She's just, uh, she's good, yeah. Unstable? No, just fucking zany, you know? Come just, on, we, we've all known actresses. Come on, who's who's yeah. the most unstable one? This is not a stable lot, generally. Actors, too. I'm, I'm not being misogynistic. Actors are just as fucked up. I think some of my... I had I did two movies with Sizemore. Oh, he's a fucking... A he's dude. a wild man. He, But you know what? Number one, he's from Detroit. Oh, is he really? Is and that how you s- got on the two? I was going to ask you. Was that just coincidence that you got on those two? Or no, it was a group of guys that were doing films, and we just, okay. uh, yeah, you know, it was a, bu- a buddy of mine, Dave Gear, uh, who's a director, producer. I uh, saw also an actor. Um, he got me on. Uh, he got me on both the films, and um, 
it was the first night I, I sat down with with Sizemore. We sat up at the bar, and he was he was wasn't drinking wine. I was drinking. I had <laughs> bought a bottle a bottle of wine, and uh, he's like, "Who are you drinking with?" I was like, "My my, my myself." He said, "You're gonna drink that whole bottle of wine?" I said, well, "At least." And uh, so we started talking 1970s NBA, and it, we we were finishing each other's sentences. It was like we were. It was like almost like you know, like stepbrothers. Mm. Hey, you want to go uh, downstairs and fucking do some karate? <laughs> you know, like the, fuck. You know the the size guys like Sizemore and Keitel, and that's a bygone era. You, those those guys that you believed danger, I guess is the word. Yeah, a little bit of danger in the actor. I mean, I a lot of the movie stars. You today look at are, Sizemore, and you take. Saving Private Ryan and Black Hawk Down, and he fucking steals both of them. You know? It's like... Mm. But, he was on one of those celebrity rehab shows, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Can't remember that. Yeah. Okay, they had let's a, get... He had his own. They had like a... He had his own. They had a, like uh, an MTV thing where they just... Remember? They just it was, they followed yeah. Sizemore. He was he was dating fucking Heidi, uh, whatever her name is, the fucking Fleiss. Yes. Um. Yeah. It was. It it was all about Sizemore. It was about uh, reconstructing his. Uh, yeah. His deal there. Um. Let's get to Brothers. In uh, that's a TV show right. in uh, two thousand nine. Yeah, it was a, fo a Fox television show with Michael Stram was was the was the star. I had the blessing to uh, be on the same episode as Snoop. Oh, did you? Did you? We, did you spark one? We, we our trailers. Oh uh, God! Like, like you, know, you, you get a full, you get a full banger, which means you get the full trailer, or you get a half banger, which means he, there's a, another cat that's got the identical, you know, identical setup on the other side. Other of the side, wall. yeah. I'm sitting in my fucking. My my room. And I said, Frank. And I said, man. I said, I don't know how long I'm going to be up at set. I said, let me go ahead and see if I can fucking drop a deuce. So I'm sitting in there, and the fucking vent from his bathroom is connected to mine. And all of a sudden, man, it's just like I'm like, holy fuck! And there were two big black dudes standing outside the trailer when I walked in, and they kind of gave me a look, and they gave him a fucking nod. They gave me a nod. And then fucking later on, fucking I, you know, I, I went over and at, at, at lunchtime I knocked it, and, and I did. I met Snoop a couple of times, and uh, did you get to partake? It was. I'd just say it was an interesting, uh, interesting show. Yeah, tell me where the bodies are buried here, man. Does do, does he get? Does he get uh, a uh, a cannabis uh, account like you have now? Not an account, a a a line. I mean, is there a Snoop cannabis line? I don't know. I'd be amazed if he's not involved. Yeah, it have to be right. Right. I mean, yeah, RVD was in there real quick, even when yeah. it was CBD before they legalized the cannabis. He yeah. was right in there with the CBD. Um, you know what? Newest pledge, for God's sakes, uh, comes out in uh, 2010. Now, Andy Milanakis. You remember him? Yeah. He had, is he still with us? Is he alive? Yeah. Okay. I just did an a, a NFT thing with him uh, in New York City. What's it, what, what did you do? Make it? In New York cryptos. Uh, New Yorker crypt, we were crypto New Yorkers. So is there an NFT of you and Andy? No, it's just, we, we, each, we each have our own. Let me see if I can. I can't understand that whole fucking thing. I'm so old. I just. You oh, could explain I, I it to me until you blew in the my, face. My whole thing was like I wasn't, uh, I wasn't putting any of my cash. I mean, it was just like, I mean, there were people that were paying twenty thousand dollars for these fucking I NFTs. Do, I just, I don't. I mean, just fucking light it on fire. What, what? Keep talking. I'm gonna see if I can fucking get. Yeah, it. no, I, just the NFTs for anyone that doesn't know, which means you're over fifty. Um, here's, and here's my. Uh, my crypto New Yorker, I don't know if you can see that. 
Right. And it's, what is it? It's, 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 uh, it's, I, it's me. Right. It's, it's, crypto, it's a digital. I'm, I'm, I'm crypto New Yorker number 733. Right. And they auction these and you, you own it in the blockchain. And, but I don't, I don't get it. It's repro it's reprodu it's instantly reproducible. What, what's the value of having the original? I just don't get it. Uh, yeah. I don't understand. I, I, I understand it. I just, anything that has a non in front of it means fucking, uh, you ain't get my cash. Anything that has a non in front of it? Yeah. Non-refundable. <laughs> not, non, <laughs> non worth, not worth a shit. <laughs> Andy Milanakis had a funny show on MTV back Great in, show. yeah, and it yeah. was one of those like irreverent man on the street kind of crazy thing. And then he just he fell off the uh, fell off the face of the earth. But now I know what he's doing. He's fucking around with NFTs with you. Yeah, going broke. Probably. He's a sneaker freak too, man. Does he have that deal where he where he looks young all the time? Is that like a th yeah? It's like a. a yeah, the Gary Coleman good. type thing. Well, Gary yeah, Coleman was small. Yeah. He's is he small too? No, he's not. I mean, he's not. Uh, he's a normal sized guy. Okay. You smoke weed with him? Yes. Okay. Good. Um, mm. River of Darkness. Kurt Angle's with you for this now. Oh my god. So we have a scene and where this the, the these fucking three dead brothers. Sid's one of them, and it's the other guys, the, the cat from the uh, moth the uh, Mothman prophecy. So our uh, reveal is we're coming out of the river. Okay, we're we're dead. We're coming out of the river, and um, we've got this black shit all over our faces. It's like dead skin or whatever. But lo and behold, as we surface out of the river, our fucking hair is absolutely dry. And I'm like, to the director, I said, uh, would our hair not be wet? Yeah, but we only have two days to shoot it, and we don't have time to dry everybody's hair. So we're just going to work around it. Wow. I went, oh. Wow, that's okay. a commentary on uh, this. This motherfucker is going to go straight. This is going to go to the bargain basement at Walmart. Wow. So, oh, well. River, I have not seen River of Darkness, by the way. So now it's, uh, it's. I think you have to micro dose some mushrooms to actually appreciate it to enjoy it. Right, I don't even. Know, I don't even think micro dose. I might. You might have to do five fucking grams, but. Uh, had he seen the doll, the Nash doll, he might have opted for a wig of some kind of you coming out of the not only dry, but that coming coming out of the lake. I think he wanted that. That's that was the whole fucking thing. Is he wanted that. He didn't want a a, a tamed version. He wanted that fucking I don't know. Almighty Thor is on television. Sci fi. Twenty eleven. Sci fi channel fucking Odin has a fucking Mac ten as his weapon when he comes back to New York, dinosaurs. I play Odin. I uh, Was it one episode? Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a made for uh, television movie. That oh, was, it was, was a was TV movie. Exclusive okay. right. sci-fi. Uh, Monster Brawl. Monster Brawl was kind of fun. That was a, a deal we did up. It was, Robert Mallard was in it. Uh, that, was, that was one of the oddities that's uh, turned into a hell of an actor. Um, uh, RJ was in it. RJ City, I think it's RJ City is, 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 is a gimmick. Um, a buddy of mine, Rico, uh, that, that we have stayed friends since that. Uh, he, he's in it. Uh, it's uh, it's a it's it's like the famous monsters of Filmland have a wrestling tournament. Right, of course they do. And I play Colonel Kirk, Kirk Crookshank, or, Crookshanks, Crookshank, whatever the fuck. Which is I, actually Bill Dundee's real last name. 
Total I wrestling. Did not mark. know that. Oh, I'm marking out right now, aren't I? Yes, Crookshanks is uh, Bill and yeah, Jamie Dundee's name. It's um, funny as I think in retrospect about that movie is they could have tied that son of a bitch up at the end in in a pretty little knot had it been a bunkhouse match. Monster bunkhouse stampede. Maybe next week we come as our favorite uh, classic werewolf movie from the Hammer films. Okay. Back in the day, black and white. All right, now you hit a stretch here. You hit, now 2012 is smiling upon Kevin Nash because the stretch of films now is Rock of Ages, Magic Mike, John Wick, Magic Mike 2. I mean, you hit the fucking mother load right here. This is where it all starts to happen, right? This is the big money. Well, listen, $35,000 for four days' work isn't bad either, but this is where it starts to roll in here. But it's never, it's, every time you do something, you think, okay, now it's going to go, and then it just never, because of your physical size, you know, it just never fucking. What do you mean? You you couldn't become more mainstream? Or do you want to be the love interest? No, you, you and a regular sized woman. You, it's going to look like a fucking you bear you, you raping be, someone. You can't be the dentist. You can't be the bank teller. You can't be just a cop. If you're a fucking detective and Denzel Washington is your fucking lead detective, yeah, he don't want you standing behind him all fucking film. Mm. You know, so all of a sudden it becomes a situation of no. You know. And I think I mean, I'm not I'm not blowing myself, but it's one thing if you're a big dude and you've got giantism and you got you. I don't I don't I look like sitting down. You I, I don't look like a six ten motherfucker right now. You know. Yeah, but I see what you're saying. I mean, there are tall actors, but six ten that you're in a different realm. You're and gonna have to be thing. the monster. There are so many. There, there, there's been several times when I've went and read for a cast for you know for a part, and the casting person say, "I you know, absolutely you know you, you crushed it. We're gonna have you back for for uh, another read, and we're gonna bring you know some of the production people in to to. And as soon as like I remember the one guy says to me, he goes, "Jesus Christ!" He goes, "You're too fucking tall." I said, "I'm six ten. Anton's seven foot." The guy I'm playing, I'm, I'm two inches shorter than how the fuck am I too tall? Mm. But a Hollywood, a Hollywood fucking 6'10 is fucking 6'5. Yeah. Joe, Be- J- Joe uh, is, is about as big as, like, you know, he's Joe 6'5. Joe who? At, uh, Magliano. Oh. So it was in Magic Mike. It was right. in, uh, Joe, Joe's about as, you know, and, and he's a handsome motherfucker, you know? So that works. That works, you know, great for him because not, not only he's six, and he's in real good shape all the time. So, uh, God, Nash, why don't you blow him? Uh, but uh, I was going to say, are you being paid for this? No, his he's, he's fucking wife, Sophia. So, so let's all right. So let's take these. This is a this is a good time for you here. So let's take these. So, um, Rock of Ages. Now, who who do you hang with here? It's a big cast. Spent I spent a ton of time uh, with uh, uh, Giamatti, Paul Giamatti. Me and, Giamatti. Me and, me and Paul Giamatti, fucking we were, we were we were buds during that. Is he as cool as he appears? I, I actually last night when we, when I was rapping, I I I went across the street. We were at uh, Gloria Estevan's uh, studio, and my and down in Miami or whatever the fuck it was. And there was a liquor store across the street. And I, I went over there and bought a really good bottle of wine, bought two glasses and a, and a corkscrew. And um, when I, I took, we had a break, we, we, we would shoot nights. It's probably like one o'clock in the morning. And he, he, he came into my trailer. We were just talking. And I said, hey, man, I said, you know what, let's, let's fucking drink some wine. He goes, oh, I've never, never drank on a set before. <laughs> I said, well, okay. But you're going to drink tonight, right? He says, I'll have, a, I'll have a small glass. So I pour him just a little fucking taste. Paul's fucking a, a man of class and, and fucking sophistication. 
That motherfucking grape opened up in his mouth. He's just like, I said, sure, buddy. You can have a glass of wine with me. He drank one glass of wine, and, you know, he really didn't have any lines after that. He was completely professional, but. Uh, but no uh, weed. No, fuck that. No weed. All right. But um, so uh, now Magic Mike comes up. Do they tell you right from the get-go what you're going to be doing? Yeah, Carmen, Carmen called me, who's uh, Steven's uh, casting uh, person. Carmen, she called me and uh, just said, you know, that Steven wanted me to uh, to be in his film. It was going to be Steven is? Soderbergh. Soderbergh, yes. Let's and um, it was going to be uh, based on uh, Channing's... Uh, upbringing as he was a dancer in Tampa, Ybor City, I think, or something like that. And so we were going to do that. And I said, what am I going to play? And she said, you'll be one of the dancers. And I'm like, well, I got a bad fucking knee, man. Like I, I've got to wear this brace to do anything. And she says, hold on. She says, you know, Steven, he's got to wear a brace. And I hear, I hear Soderbergh go, is it big and bulky? She says, is it big and bulky? I said, yeah. He goes, she goes, yeah. He goes, yeah, it'll be funnier. So that was it. Thank you God too, because I, 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 Channing is, is, I consider him a, a very, very good friend of mine. Um, Reed that, that wrote the, the, uh, the screenplay and also played tall Paul in the first one. And then Adam Rodriguez, um, who is like a brother now, like just, just Adam, like having Adam Rodriguez in my life, uh, makes the two Magic Mike movies just because he's like my brother. You know, he's Adam is just fucking salt of the earth, one of the best motherfuckers, beautiful wife, beautiful family. Just he's just such a. I don't even, I, I'll get choked up if I go any further. Yeah, calm down. Um, do do you? How did the guys in Hollywood? You know, you're you you're known for wrestling. I mean, you you've got a lot of credits. And maybe by this point, you were more established. But at a certain point, you're the wrestler on the set, right? How do the other actors take to you? Did, did they always look at you as one of them? Or was there kind of like you're coming from the outside, like when a football player is in a movie or something? No, like because that. like at that, with, in that, especially that, uh, that age difference, most of those guys grew up watching me. That's true. You know, Joe was a fan. Like, so, yeah, it was, yeah. John Wick would fall into this category of a, a very big mainstream project right on the heels of uh, of Magic Mike, right? You, you, yeah, it's 2014. Like a, I mean, it's just a scene, but, I mean, and nobody knew that John Wick was going to blow up, be who it was, but... uh it was so funny. I met Kiana. Uh, it, it's so weird doing a film in New York City because, like, the production office is like on the twenty third floor, yeah. <laughs> you know. And you you walk, you get it's like some it looks like it's some Johannesburg abandoned building, and uh, you go up to the twenty third floor and you, you you walk along and there's some arrows pointing here and there, yeah. and you go into fucking wardrobe and. I'm I'm walking out of wardrobe and I'm walking down this hallway and the hallway's fucking long as fuck, and I see this guy in a the ar the Russian army gimmicks with with the not with the flaps down but up, uh -huh. and he's got a, co a coat on and his, his boots are untied. It's Kiana, so he's 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 walking towards me. I'm walking towards him, you know, and I don't want to be a mark, but he just he gets close up. He goes, it "Must be Francis." I said, yeah, I am. He goes, so, yeah. we stopped, had just two seconds. Said, you know, hey, got in the elevator. Next night we're shooting. It's like fucking one in the morning. We're like two blocks from the Bowery. It's like 16 degrees below zero. And they they block me. They get me ready for the fucking shot. And they go, Kiana? And this guy that kind of, you know, you know, 
not really imposing or anything, that walked down the hallway. This motherfucker comes out. He's got a little <laughs> tiny bottle of Coca Cola, fucking cigarette, fucking just. I'm like Jesus. The guy he was like, he, 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 you're talking about somebody that, who's just presence, just like, and it was just like he just he he was John fucking Wick. It was not Keanu. That was John Wick. You know, like you could just see that transformation. It was just like at the it, all of a sudden it wasn't cold. I didn't give a fuck. It was just like wow. It, 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 I got a chance to work with Travolta, not on on, on screen, but be around him and uh, get your I, back I got, rubbed a little bit. Yeah, and I got a chance to work with Tom Cruise. I mean, there's very, I mean, fucking, uh, I put Channing up there with those guys. Absolutely. I mean, fucking, there, there's guys that are just fucking movie stars. Yeah. You know, like they just got something extra. Yeah, it's that it's that X factor, and it's the it's the cruelest thing in entertainment because it can't be manufactured. You can study all you want, and it's just the camera just loves people. Yeah. And, uh like a Marilyn Monroe or or a James Dean who, you know, in person were good looking, but when the camera hits them, it's it becomes impossible to take your eyes off them. And it's it's one of those things that's that's unfair, but it's just some people just have that. Um you do the uh X XXL, right? Magic Mike? Mm -hmm. Follow up John Wick with that. Going back with the same crew. What yeah. had what had changed? Anything? Uh, McConaughey wasn't in the second one. Oh, okay. Yeah, McConaughey wasn't in the second one. How was he to hang with? Oh, fuck, man. He seems like he'd be fucking wild. He's a great guy. We yeah. drink we drink wine every single day on set. Right. Who who could keep up with you? Of of the of this of this crew we're talking about. We talked about Sizemore. We talked about. We know Giamatti's not. Um. I oh I, I know Sizemore. I didn't. I, I was told to like be chill around uh, around Sizemore, like because of his recovery. No, just don't instigate because you know, I've, I've I've been known to be called Baby Andre. I can drink fucking four or five bottles of wine in a night and get up and fucking you know make 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 call like it's nobody's business. Where the other, everybody else is just like fucking, they wake up and they like who hit me with the sledgehammer. Wine's very unforgiving if you fucking overdo it, right? What um, so so who so who in particular could could go uh, glass for glass with you? Well, the Magic Mike movies. We both like, both of those were and we we're in fucking like had to be in shape the whole time, so nobody drank. Oh, uh, really? Right. So it would be like the la like the last night in Myrtle Beach when we wrapped the second one. Um, we were all up till four or five o'clock as per the Johnny Depp, uh, Amber Heard trial would, why she was out till five thirty, I have no idea, except the fucking party went that long. But you're uh, the only one that she had the misfortune or you had the misfortune that she was photographed with. Cause this was all just because of the, of the picture, right? Yeah. Yeah. She took no other pictures that night. At the rap party? No, I told her she not, she, she couldn't. <laughs> if you're gonna be with me, damn it, you be with me. No. Did you get any? A, did you get any professional fallout from that? You know, we're in a day and age now where it's like any anything at all in the, the entertainment is such a finicky. No, I didn't get any. Nothing. No. Because I have a picture in the same fucking shirt with Jada, you know? Mm hmm It's just like, yeah. Johnny ever reach out to you? No. Okay. Nobody, Did nobody... Amber reach out to you after no. No. the trial? No. Just mention Amber's name and music plays. Yeah. That's love, baby. It's fucking TMZ. Uh, the Detroiters is a TV series. Oh, well, great show. Which fittingly had you on it. Yes. Tell me about the Detroiters. S Sam Richardson and Tim Robinson. Uh, Tim was, uh, was on Saturday Night Live. Um, he's got an amazingly funny, uh, show that's on, uh, 
on Netflix right now. And Sam Sam Richardson is fucking he was the uh the black assistant uh that did kind of everything in Veep and has been in everything and is just blowing the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Uh Sam's having a, a, a really great run. Uh so yeah, just those those guys and they, they kinda let me fucking do my own thing and improvise and have some fun. I got to do a little physical comedy and some I love comedy. That's like that's my that's I think I'm 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 the best at that. Uh to put me in a comedic role. But then once again, you know, just like, oh, that's the you want to be the six ten funny guy. Right. We wanna put and... an we wanna put an axe in your hand. I'm like, fuck, right. really? Wrestling's the only place where that's where that's an advantage, I guess. I guess. Six ten. You know what? Um, and, and you get to be called a big goof. Right. Because you want to break people's streaks. Right. Um the the uh the assault. That was uh, one of the Sizemore films, yep. right? Yeah. Played Cisco. Now Slaw. This was a parody of Saw of the horror yeah. film series, it's a, right? It's horrible. But you played yourself in this, no? Yeah. We were just some wrestlers at a table. The the sad thing is is a very, very close friend of mine, John Cat, um, was in the movie, but he also um, wrote and uh, co-produced and ended up uh, several years ago getting real close to getting a, a spot on a Marvel movie. And it was like they just kept calling for his, his agent for availability. And that's the worst thing on earth. You know, I did, they did that with me with that cable, the uh, Deadpool 2. They kept calling my agency and saying, you know, is, is, we're, uh, we're calling from Deadpool on uh, availability on Kevin Nash for these dates, for, for these dates, for these dates, for these dates. And as long as they keep calling for availability, you've already done your read. So, like, you are you figure you're in the mix and you keep thinking, like, this is going to be it. Like, if I would have got cable, then I, I think I would have fucking, then I'd have been in the Marvel Universe. And fucking, not, now you're in eight movies. So what happens? They call for your availability. It- your agent gives it to them, and and then what? And then they fucking put Bro- uh, Brolin in it. All right. So, so, there so it, it wasn't I a mean, conflict. It wasn't a conflict. No, it, they just went a different direction. Right. And I actually, I actually find it funny, uh, because if you ever watch the Deadpool two, he he's talking. He gets his band of fucking uh, rejects together. And he says, you got to watch out for Cable. And he does, he's got, he's, he's drawn. He puts this stick figure. He goes, and he puts like a line over the top, and it puts the line down. He goes, nowhere near the size of the guy in the comic books. Much smaller. Because, <laughs> you know, I think, I think I, for some reason, I think Ryan kind of wanted me just to, 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 I don't know why, I just had a feeling that he pushed to get me that spot. And if you did, I, I I drink aviator gin and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> what is living the dream? Living the dream was a British uh, sitcom that we shot in Savannah, Georgia. It was a British couple sight unseen by a trailer park in Kissimmee, Florida, and has two uh, has a senior and a sophomore uh, child. And the fucking hijinks that, that ensue. Uh, yes. Well, so. you're 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 a fan of comedy, so yeah, you had your opportunity. Blood Circus, for God's sakes. Another uh, Sizemore. Sizemore again. Yes. I think Sizemore kills me. What's the horror film that I'm thinking of? The Manor. The Manor. Yeah. You're Reverend Thomas, for Christ's sake, aren't you? Are you the bad guy in this? No. No, I, I, it was a one-day shoot. I'm on the fucking cover of the... Tell me. I don't... It's like Clippers. I'm on the cover of Clippers and, and on the fucking DVD cover of Clippers and a fucking outfit that I get like a leather jacket and a fucking revolt, like a chrome revolt. It's like some photoshopped badass picture of me that's not me. It's just my face. And they... It... And you only did one day on it, and they put you on the I box? I did one day on both. Right. 
All they try to do is get distribution anywhere. Yeah, I heard that. The, I, 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 I don't. I, I don't want to be be kind of get this. I don't know if the cat. Most of the cast was Nigerian, but wherever it was, like it opened huge, and I was super over. And like I kept getting invites to like do personal appearances and stuff over there in Nigeria. Yeah, but it was it was close. It, it was a. I don't know if it was Nigeria, but it was a country that was close enough to um where that Darfur whole fucking situation was going oh. on at, at the time. And it was just like, yippee. Are we going to make any reference to this fucking badass acrylic commission piece of art? Yeah, uh, speak, speaking of Darfur, that's where it was painted, <laughs> right? Yes. Okay. That's actually the conflict behind me. That's called, called Warrior from Darfur. I keep getting them wrong. Was it Bulgaria? What was it? Czechoslovakia. Czech, she's Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia. This paint, for anyone that doesn't know, she's not, the saga of this painting, Kevin shows me this painting about, I don't know, five months ago. Right? We're, talking, we're talking about setting up the studio and what the shot is. And he's like, yeah, I'm commissioning some original artwork for, uh, for, for the studio for myself. I was like, all right, cool. And so he shows me and he, you came across this, this woman's art somewhere, On right? Instagram on instagram and he yes. reached out didn't think there'd be any problem reaching out you know to romania check for, for the commissioned artwork and um so here we are uh, months later it arrived finally it's a it's a big piece i don't think people can get from the perspective that you have there now but it's a very large piece and it was uh, it was an original piece, was it not? Give her a yes. shout out. What's her name? Yeah. Um, it's it's Renata Lang Langana. I I should let me just see if I can pull her up because she has an Instagram page. She's a beautiful red haired girl. That's um, always the prerequisite for buying. When Kevin buys art, it, it's it's the the not just the work, but it's. How the artist looks. It's nice right? to know that that a, you don't uh, have a Warhol on your wall, clearly, or a Peter Max. No. I believe that her tag is just Renart, R E N A R T. Okay. So there you go, a little plug. And if you I'll like. uh, let me just see if I can. You you two can have yours eleven months from now. No, it um, was much quicker you, than that. If you reach out, it was much quicker than that. She actually put it on like super duper uh, speed dial. It's remarkable that it comes intact like that. There's no damage or anything. Like uh, I'd be so was... nervous in shipping something like that. Listen, we, here's I, my here's my artist. Who she is? You see that? That's my yeah. artist. Did you even look at any of the art before you commissioned her? Was that photo enough? No, actually, actually, um, I saw this picture, and yeah. I just absolutely loved the the brush stroke. A lot of texture in there. Yeah, too. it was Very it was cool. amazing, and I saw it just going through Instagram, and um, then I saw another painting like the next day that was you know completely different color scheme but it was I, I could tell it was the same so i i fucking looked back and i remembered it was ren something but i had no idea who the who the, who the artist was and i uh i went back and, and looked it up and i i was just like wow like it's it i don't think it's it it, it ever like I, I I don't give a fuck if, if you come over to my house and you're going to change out my air conditioning. I'd rather you look like fucking Tony Curtis than fucking, you know, some fat fucking piece of shit. Mm. That's just me. I like, mm -hmm. I mean, I, there's, there's, I, I, art's, art's beautiful. And if a, if, if the person's attractive, I think that they're going to put out, uh, so like she a, kind of lives through the art there. Here she is. Let's see is. a little of her work. It's intense. Yeah. It's got a little ink. Is that some ink on her leg there? A little bit. There's that stroke you were talking about with the, uh, the, uh. Yeah, she got some ink. 
That that uh, green dress there. Can we go into that there for a second here? We're clearly advertising more than the art. She's very smart. She's got you on the hook. Now, can we get can we get an affordable painting here? We, you know, we we have to be mindful of our audience. You know, not, not everybody listening to us has you I, know, I seventy five films to I, their credit. I, I wanted, I, I'm not kidding you. I want to think that all in, including FedEx from Czechoslovakia, four K. Okay, that's and it's a big piece too. Yeah, it's it, it's it's sizable. Eleven so. soft. Eleven. <laughs> All right, chick fight. I have to. We have to get back here. We have to get back into this. All right. um, chick the, fight. Good. Uh, uh, Alec Baldwin. Uh, Malik. Uh, Malik was in that. Who else was in? That? I'm a Baldwin fan, and I know it's. I I, 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 I love him on Instagram because he's very. I mean, he's got. He he, he always says shit. You know, like yeah, yeah, I was I was going in for an audition, and uh, I was in L.A. at the time, and. You know, they only had one jazz station, and I remember, you know, I listened to the piece, and I didn't get a chance. So I, and when I got back from the audition, I got in my car, and I, I, I you know, re remember what time it was, and I got back, and uh, I went to my apartment, and I, I called the radio station. I said, uh, "Who's the artist that was uh, was playing that riff at uh, one twenty-three this afternoon?" And, yeah, just a, just he's an interesting motherfucker. I, I like man. when he did the that slice of life. He does sometimes get political on on Instagram, and that's fine. I mean, he he's a political guy, and he has his opinions, and I respect him for that. But I love the slice of life stuff that he does, and I think the appeal of your show here <laughs> is very much that. I think you kind of have a Baldwin type vibe in entertainment where you could talk about different things. I listen to Alec Baldwin. The fucking Instagram video has to be twenty minutes long. Talk about a uh, he uh, he he always starts very dramatic, right? The, the, the thing comes on and he's like, "So I uh, just spent some time in uh, Syracuse, uh, a fascinating city, and uh, <laughs> there's a uh, a consignment shop in the basement of a street in Syracuse. It's called Syracuse Underground, and." Uh, where you can buy uh, cufflinks or, uh, or or china or various things and uh, the proprietor of the uh, location and he'll go on he'll go on for 20 minutes and he did go on for 20 minutes about a consignment shop in a basement in Syracuse I'm listening to this I'm hysterical I'm sitting in the living room I'm laughing my ass I'm played for my wife she doesn't get it my my oldest daughter she's a teenager she has no time for me <coughs> but she enjoys my silliness and so I play this so he's talking about, for 20 minutes, that the proprietor of this shop, a man named Bruce Block, let's just give him the, the plug right here, is back. He's back, and he has taken the shop back, and they're, 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 they're open again after COVID, whatever. So I'm, I'm joking around, and I begin to put little signs around the house. Bruce Block is back. I put one on the refrigerator. It was Christmas. I put one on the top of the tree, whatever, because that's what living with me is like. A half hour later, I get an email from Bruce Block saying uh, that I had questions saying, say, yes, this Bruce, you had some questions about the store. My wife, as I'm doing this goes on, goes to the website and submits a question from me to this proprietor of a consignment shop or an antique shop in Syracuse. And I, and I actually get the email. It was, it was a great rib. So I love Baldwin. Is Baldwin cool on the set? Is he, uh, is he uh, is he intimidating? Is he? No, he's just he's. I got I got the the first time I worked with him was on Rock of Ages. Yes, we that's right. You did we two. Actually have, yeah, we have, actually have some scenes together, and uh, we're sitting there, and I had this orangutan, like a ninety pound orangutan that was uh, on my shoulder, called Hey Man, and uh, as in Paul. <laughs> yeah, and he says, uh, "Hey Nash, it." Uh, it doesn't like freak you out at all to uh thanks man uh it doesn't freak you out at all to have that fucking monkey on you guess what if it decides to uh you know peel back your fucking scalp i said well hopefully i can grab it by its throat and kill it before then i said but if and this 
this uh, monkey got on me and it was just like, when he got up on my, on my shoulder and we're walking through a bar and the bar is packed, he was just like, oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> like, I'm with a big alpha motherfucker. Like, this is chill. He just, he put his head down fucking, like he was, the guy that was his handler said, he never gets along with anybody like this. Like if he, I just put my back to him the first day and that, that monkey jumped on me. But uh, yeah, I got a chance to work with Walwin twice. Um, COVID-19, the invasion, you have a very prominent role in this film, do you not? You know what was amazing about this film uh, is uh, the director um, sh shot it and it was during, it was, it was like dead in the middle of COVID. Mm. And he shot everything like with distance and then he never used like he, he mic'd us but he also used um the all the booms would be on tripods hmm. so he would you know he would kind of shoot accordingly for sound and you know everything you know we a lot of it was outdoors i only shot for a, a day or two on that it, it, it actually qualified me for insurance for the year so you only did a day or two? I said, you're in the whole trailer, I think. I thought you were the lead. You worked me. Dog. Dog. You're reunited with Channing. Channing. Yep. He bring and you Reed. into this? And Reed. Reed Reed uh Reed and Channing uh Reed wrote it again and then Reed also direct co directed with Channing. This was Channing's uh, and and Reed's uh, directorial debuts. Mm. Did he bring you into it? Did, or, or was did, it? Did, no, yeah. Did he bring you in, or, or was it just coincidence that you? No, Ch Channing. Ch first, that first thing they was was they sent me the script, and the script was amazing. Uh, like to the point where you know you laughed, you got choked up. One of the best scripts I've ever I've re ever read in my life. And they said, what do you think about the script? I thought they were just doing it to, to, to get my opinion. And I said, I said, man, I said, it was, it was amazing. You know, I said, not to blow anybody. I said, but you know, it's fucking really, really, uh, I mean, I could just visualize, you know, each scene. I could, mm -hmm. I could, I said, I could storyboard that fucking movie. Right. And they said, what do you think about playing Gus? And I just laughed. I said, you serious? And he said, yeah, he says, he says, can you just, he says, we got some time. Can you just let your, you know, let your beard grow and your hair grow? And I'm like, it's COVID, man. Like, yeah, I, I can definitely do it. So I just let my shit grow. And So looking back at this, at this storied film career, what, um, what didn't get the attention that you wished it had and what, what got out there that you would, that you could have done without? Any any <sighs> film that you wish did a little better, like a the little film that could. Well, Dog did great. You know, Dog did yeah. over eighty million, and I think I think we had a seven million dollar budget on that. I think the first Magic Mike was a maybe a eight or nine million dollar film. They did like one fifty. Um, so. Uh, I wish Punisher would have got uh, probably a, a, a little bit. I thought that Thomas Jane was by far the best Punisher. Um, but you know what? I think it, it, in your journey in life, you know, it's like I just any time that I have been blessed to be on the other side of that that fucking camera, because when I was a kid, man, that's when I got, and I, I I'm so goal driven that once i reach a goal it's very hard for me to fucking focus to like my next goal in that fit in that you know that field so to me it was just like one of these days i'm gonna sit in a movie theater and i'm gonna see me in a fucking film and i'm gonna watch my name on the credits and lo and behold 1991 is when it came out I went, sat in the back of a movie theater, watched Ninja Turtles, watched my scene, saw my name, 
went in my fucking car. Gaylord parried one. Uh, then uh, it was like when I was in wrestling. I said, when, when I become, if I ever become the world champion, you know, like that, that, that would, I, I, like, what the fuck must that be like? And I'd see guys that would win, you know, win the title. And I'd be like, and then lo and behold, I mean, I, not only do I win the, the, the title, I win it in a house show at the garden in eight seconds with somebody that held the belt for like eight fucking years at one point. 